What's up guys, in this video, what I wanna do is show you how to write the equation of a line perpendicular to another line that goes through a given point. So in this first example, you can see we have y equals a negative five x plus seven. And I think many students are kind of familiar with to be able to how to find the slope of lines. So you could say m is equal to a negative five. But a lot of times, sometimes students will get confused is with that opposite reciprocal kind of idea. So let's just kind of do a quick little review here of fractions. So a fraction, right, is just a comparison between two quantities. And let's say we have a over b. So if I'm gonna say the reciprocal of that, that's basically just swapping the numerator and the denominator. So therefore the reciprocal is going to be B over A. Now when we're talking about the opposite, we're talking about the opposite sign. It doesn't mean negative, doesn't mean positive, it just means whatever the opposite sign is. So if A over B, we can represent that as positive, that means B over A now, if it's going to be the opposite, is now going to be negative. So the way that this kind of works, if you look at this equation, we have M equals negative five. Now you could say the opposite then is going to be a positive five, but what about the reciprocal? Because this is not written as fractional form like a over b. So the cool thing about all whole numbers though is you can always rewrite them as over one. So therefore, a lot of times when I'm doing a problem like this, what I like to do is say, all right, let's identify what we have, right? We fi figured out the slope from our equation. We have an X and a Y coordinate that the graph has to go through. This is kind of like what is our old stuff. So let's go and talk about the new stuff, right? Our new slope has to be the opposite reciprocal. So let's go and flip this and make it opposite. So therefore our new slope has to be positive one fifth. Now it still has to go through the point 10 comma two, all right? And that's still going to be our X and our Y. So how do we write the equation of the line? Well, we're given the slope and we're given a point. The fastest, easiest way to write the equation of the line given a point and a slope, in my opinion, is to use point slope form, which is y minus y1 equals a m times an x minus an x1. So you might say, well, where did the ones come from? Well, if we're trying to write this equation of the line in slope intercept form, which I'm not sure if I clarified at the beginning of this video, then there's only one x and one y, right? And the x and the y represent infinite many points that make up the line. So this x1 and y1 actually represent the one point that we are referring to that is on the line or that the line has to go through, which in this case is 10 too. So therefore I'm going to clarify this as an X one and a Y one, because the general equation of the line is always going to be Y and X. Now, the cool thing about point slope form is once you actually plug in a point and the slope, that actually is an equation of the line. So you want to make sure you're listening to your teacher or the directions on a test or a quiz to make sure that your requirements for writing the equation of the line, can it be in point slope form or do you actually need to simplify it to slope intercept form? All right. So now that we have our information, let's just simply go ahead and plug it in and then go ahead and simplify. Okay, so now here you could use parentheses, but since my both my values were positive, I just kind of left it off. The only thing really I wanna do here is just now make sure I apply distributive property, and then I'm gonna add the two to the other side. So when I do that, I get a one fifth X, so that's gonna be one fifth X, which again, we have to have, right? We know it has to be the opposite reciprocal slope of my original equation, and then one fifth times negative 10, so that's a one fifth times a negative 10, right? Again, you can rewrite the 10 as over one. Five divides into negative 10. So therefore I have a negative two and then plus two, right? Well, negative two plus two is just going to be zero. So y is going to equal a one fifth x. All right, now in this example, we have our equation in standard form. So there's two different ways we can find the slope. Um, if you are familiar with standard form, then a cool little trick that you can do is m is going to equal opposite of a divided by b. Okay, so that's always gonna work. Just make sure it is in standard form, ax squared plus by is equal to c. And then you can quickly go ahead and find the slope. But if that's not something you are comfortable with or anything else, you can always just solve for y, right? And just, you know, undo what's happening to the variable, get the x over to the other side. So you get a negative three y equals a negative four x, you know, plus a 12 and then divide by negative three. And when you do something like that, y is going to equal a positive four thirds. And let's see, that's going to, oop, that's gonna be an x, right? So let's go ahead and redraw that correctly. And then that's going to be a minus a four, 12 divided by negative three. And let's see if that works, right? Did I get a four thirds? If I did the opposite of four, that'd be a negative four. And then over b, which would be a negative three. So negative four over negative three is a positive four thirds. Okay, but again, remember guys, this is the old equation. I'm looking for a perpendicular line that goes through this point. So here, that goes to the point three comma two. So again, I need to find a perpendicular line. That means I need to find the opposite reciprocal slope. So in this case, my slope is positive. So therefore the opposite slope is going to be a negative and four over three is a fraction. So if I was going to do the reciprocal of that, it would just be a three over four. So it has to go, still go through point three comma two, right? And that's going to be my X one. And that's going to be my Y one. Now I have a point and now I have a slope. Let's go ahead and plug them into the point slope form and Y minus Y one equals a M times a X minus an X one. Okay, so let's just go ahead and plug them in. Again, I have positive numbers, which is gonna be nice here, negative three fourths. 
and that's gonna be an X minus A3, okay? And then again, we can just apply your distributor property and then isolate your two all by itself by adding the two to the other side. So let's see what we get here. So um, negative three fourths X times, you know, it's just gonna be negative three fourths, I'm sorry, times X, it's just gonna be negative three fourths X. A negative three fourths times a negative three, that's gonna be a positive nine over four and then plus two. Okay, so now I need to add the nine fourths plus two so I can rewrite my two as two over one. And then to get a common denominator, I'll just multiply by a four over four. So therefore I get a Y equals a negative three fourths X. Let's see, that's going to be a, that'd be an eight plus nine is going to be plus a 17 fourths. Now, now it is in slope intercept form. And sometimes students will actually ask me, well, can we just use slope intercept form? Like why do you have to use point slope form? Or I always forget point slope form. And yeah, you can also do that way as well. The way you do that is just write your new equation. Y equals a negative three fourths X, right? Plus B. And then what you can do is you can treat your three and your two as your X and your Y and then solve for B. Now, if we do this, we better get a seven four. So hopefully I did my math correctly. So let's go and see if it works out. So when I plug in, well, let's say a two is equal to a negative three fourths, right? And then that's gonna be what times a three plus B. All right, now again, what we get here is a two is equal to a negative nine over four plus B. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a nine fourths to both sides. And again, what was two plus nine fourths? That was a 17 fourths. So 17 fourths is going to be equal to B, which again is the exact same thing we did over here. So I prefer point slope form because when you have a point and a slope, it just makes sense. But again, if you still are kind of stuck with using slope intercept form, that is an alternative way that you can also go ahead and write the equation of the line. All right, now in this last example, you can see we have Y equals seven and it has to go through a point negative two comma negative five. Now, if we were to kind of write this in slope intercept form, we kind of have a little bit of an issue. So if I wrote this as Y equals MX, plus B, right? Hopefully you kind of recognize here Y equals a zero X, right? Because that's how you're going to get rid of the X. And then that's going to be a plus seven. So seven does not represent the slope. So don't write, don't write the slope as a negative one seventh. That is not the case. Zero is actually our slope, but that's problem because zero is not positive or negative. So how do you take the opposite of that? And otherwise, how do you take the reciprocal, right? Because if you were going to say, well, I could write zero as over one. Okay, that's fine. But if you take the reciprocal of it, don't do equals, but if you did the reciprocal, then you would have a one over zero, which is undefined. And how can we write the undefined slope for an equation of the line? So in this problem, I think it's actually kind of important to kind of visually understand what this graph looks like. So therefore we can kind of quickly and easily write the equation of the line. So if I was just gonna go ahead and graph this, right? And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the X and the Y axis and I'll say, all right, here's the Y axis, here's the X axis. Now, if Y is equal to seven, that means my Y values is equal to seven. It doesn't really matter what my X value is. When X equals one, Y is seven. X equals two, Y is seven. X equals three, Y is seven. Negative one, Y is seven. Negative two, Y is seven. Negative three, Y is seven. So set X is always equal to seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'll change my scale a little bit, sorry. So Y is always equal to seven. So what that means, Y equals seven is a horizontal line. Now, if something is perpendicular, what that means is that's gonna create a 90 degree angle with that. So we gotta think like, what is gonna be perpendicular with the horizontal line? And yeah, it's a vertical line, but it's very important. This vertical line has to go through this point, negative two, negative five, right? So so don't just say it's like X equals seven. It has to go through this point. So let's plot this point. So this is gonna be negative two and then negative five. One, two, three, four, five. So it has to go through this point. So what is a vertical line? Like it can't be a vertical line over here, right? It has to be a vertical line that is over here that goes right through there. And you can see here when I write a draw a vertical line right through that point, you're, you can see it makes that 90 degree angle, right? That's perpendicular lines. And then we need to find, well, what is this X value? Well, this X value is when X equals a negative two. And that was apparent obviously right there in the point. So the line that is perpendicular to Y equals seven that goes to the point, negative two, negative five is going to be X equals a negative two. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen, that is how you write the equation of a line perpendicular to another. If you want more examples or to take a look at my notes I have regarding writing the equation of the line, then go and check out the playlist and information I have for you down below or check out the next video I created for you here. Cheers.